a new episode. It's been a while since I've been talking to you. Got a new job. It's been quite busy, so haven't quite had the time. But delighted to jump back in. Three weeks ago, Eddie Stream sent me this question. You make a tutorial where you click on a mesh and the camera flies down from above to point at it. Like a bird's eye view, so I'm imagining looking straight down and then swooping in kind of eye to eye to a mesh. So I've got this effect going. Thanks so much, Eddie, for the question. Uh, it's often tough to come up with ideas to share with you guys and maybe sometimes doing a lot of the same stuff. So when you send me in questions like that, it keeps it lovely, fresh and really interesting for me. And I'm learning. You're showing me, asking me about things maybe I haven't thought of myself. So I have a demo going here. I've made a few changes since I've been gone. Hopefully the sound is better. Though there were lots of problems with that. I've had someone talk me through it. I think I just had my microphone turned down too low. Hopefully when I'm typing, it won't be as noticeable. And another thing I'm going to do is for each lesson, I'm going to have a GitHub where I will have a demo file where you'll be able to play with things a little bit and see how things are working. And then I'll have a strip down file, which is actually what you'd want for to copy from the actual example that you would use to carry out the code without all the extra stuff for the demo. So let me show you the demo first. We've got the camera here, bird's eye view, pointing straight down at a target. So this is really the trick. We're going to move the camera. We're going to separately move the target of the camera. So Eddie, in your example, where you're talking about clicking on a mesh, and having the camera look at it, what you'd want to do is click on the mesh and move the camera's target to where the that mesh is. And the advantage of using a target is you can animate that target towards the mesh. And you're not trying to figure out where should the camera be looking on the way. So if we see this here, that's what we're doing. The camera is currently looking at the target, which is straight below it. As we animate, we want to move the target towards the finish box. We want to avoid. That's what the camera is going to swoop in under is this avoid block. And then it's going to finish looking at the finish block. So if I scroll the animation on, you'll see that that's all happening. The target block is moving over. The camera keeps looking at it and it rotates to look at it and then it smooths out. So we've got is a Bezier curve that the camera position is going to follow. So when we're at the start of the animation, we're at the top of the Bezier curve or at the end of the animation, we're at the end. And if we're halfway, we're halfway along that curve. The whole time we're looking at the target block. So that's really the trick. So how do we do that? Let's have a look in the stripped down version. So I've tried to make this as simple as possible. What we've got is, so this playhead here is just to simulate an animation. Let's say when we're at the bottom, the animation hasn't started and we're up at one. The animation's finished and we're kind of working on percents in between. And all of this is just a settings variable with this playhead value in it and we're passing it to Daku. That's all that's going on there. Again, you might want this to be time based. And all that I've done is add the stage and the camera in a kind of default position. Cool. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is first put in a target for us. So as we had there, so say we have a little material. Uh, hopefully that keyboard isn't too loud. I'll try and, I'll try and be real quiet. Uh, standard material and let's make that have a color. And just a simple cube for the geometry. The box 
Bounce geometry. Basically, I'm gonna make a mesh. And then let's just add that to the scene. And my setup here might be a little different to yours, but as I say, this will be all on GitHub. So you should be able to have a look at this and find out why I'm doing things weird. And um, so that mesh doesn't have a material a geometry cool so that's huge let's make it a little smaller that's more like it so my scene that i'm using here actually has a floor there so we might want to just say this.mesh Position Y is a little note or two here just to make sure I'm making this look nice. So let's set that to point one as well. And that should be just minus point one. Weird. Oh, it's not this dot mesh. Silly. Cool. So that is hard to see. Let's go for something a bit more contrasty. Cool. So now we have this block in the middle. And this is our target. So this is where we want the camera to be looking. So as we animate, we're going to move the target. So I've got a little animator function here. So the first thing we need to know is how far through the animation are we? The moment we're not doing anything so we're gonna get where we are in the animation we're gonna have a playhead and that's gonna be from the settings so that is these settings up here so even if i were to console log those the what this cool so it's zero one and when i scroll up here it's showing where we are in the animation so this value is just coming in and we can use it as if it's a movement through time so we want to move the target so we're gonna say that our mesh call this mesh here i usually call the target i'm gonna just update that so i don't confuse myself target. hopefully it's clear for you as well so we're going to say target dot position uh, x so it's the x axis we want to move it along so let's say just for now that that's equal to playhead by 10. So what that's going to do is move, it's not going to do, setting dot x, target dot position dot x. Can it set properties for the file? Strange, strange, strange. And pause Tia. There we go. Cool. So we're going to multiply the position x by 10, or sorry, the position of the playhead by 10. So if we're at 1, it's going to be 10. It's going to be all the way over to the right. Where at the start, it's going to be like it is now in the middle. So I can now move that block cool so i really only want to move this from a little bit to the left over to the right so where we're actually going to go from is so if this was minus five 
we want to over the text over here, so that's too far. That's minus two. That's still too far. Do just one. Still a bit far. Five. Cool. So that's where we wanted to start. And then when we finish, we also want it to be 0.5, which would be inside that box. So how do we get a number between 0 and 1 to match up with minus 0 0.5 plus 0.5? We just need to take away 0.5. So if we say playhead minus 0.5, and it's at 0, it'll be at 0 0.5 on the left where we want it. And it's at 1, 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. So this should be the target exactly where we want it. Cool. So it's starting where we want, and when we animate it, Look, going exactly where we want it to go. So we've got the target, and now we want the camera to look at that target. So we're going to say, simple as this dot camera. What is wrong with spell today? Camera dot look at target dot position. Because it's not we need the target, it's the position we want it to look at. Ah, did I rename the camera? Default camera. Just trying to make things clear, and I confuse myself again. Cool. So you see, it's changed. It's not as... So if I remove this line again, we were looking straight at the scene, and now we're looking at an angle at the scene towards that block. So as I move the playhead, we're looking at that block. So now we've got the, the hard part done of following and animating where the target is and where the camera is looking. The next thing we need to do is change where the camera position is. So if I jump back to the demo for a second, you see I've got this curve that's very thin there now that I think about it, and it might be hard to see. But this is a simple Bezier curve. You can go into this in more detail if you want. It's essentially just drawing a line. I'm going to copy it from the demo. Again, ask me if you want me to go through that in more detail. But for now, I'm just going to make the curve. And in the demo here, you can see as we're let me just hide the target for now. So as we scroll through, we're asking three to say, okay, on this line, we're 0.53 of the way through the animation. So find the point that's 0.53 of the way along that curve and give me that position. So that's what we want to do. So we have the curve here. We want to be able to get that position. So to get it, what we're going to say is the position that we're after is, so I'm going to name this a little nicer and call it Bezier. So because it's a Bezier curve, so it's going to be Bezier, and then get the point that is a certain percentage of the way through. So the percentage of the playhead. And if we console log position. Let's see what's happening here. We're getting a vector. And as we oh, come on, scroll through, scroll through, it's giving us different vectors. So all we need to do now is say set the default camera position, we're going to set that from position.x, position.y, position.z, and we should have the camera jump up here immediately and look down at the cube. Oh, we got something wrong. The amount of things that VS Code is popping up, but it's still letting me misspell things. Let's 
pass. Ah, I'm getting it all right. There we go. So, we're now looking at the target. We know the target's going to move. We know the camera's going to look at it. And hopefully, when I move the playhead, the camera will slide along that curve. Beautiful. So another little tweak I want to make here is, if you see when we're moving along, the camera and the cube are moving at exactly the same speed. And that's a little, I don't know, there's, there's a little tweak I want to put in here. So what I'm going to do is actually do the square root of the playhead here. And it'll make more sense if I show you here. So, because I've got the same thing on, on this demo, we will see when we're halfway through the cube is actually past the halfway point, just a little bit past, and it just makes it a little bit slicker. It's a, it's a tiny difference. I don't know if you see that, where the cube's already under while the camera's quite high up, so we can see that the, the bottom of this cube here. I'm thinking about it too much. Anyway, I've popped that in. You can leave it out. Um, so here we have bird's eye view. We're swooping to finish looking at a particular mesh. We still have our target in the way. So what we could do is just target that visible is false. And that's handy for if you want to debug, you can leave it in. But creating meshes and adding extra points to the scene is kind of, in this example, it's not a big problem, but if you're doing something bigger, you probably want to tidy that up a little bit. So what we can do is simply say that we can get rid of the mesh and the geometry, geometry and say that target is just a new object 3D, and they have a position. So we can set the position, set the target, and everything should still work fine. So we're moving that object 3D, which has no material, it has no vertices, it's got no geometry, it's just an entity in a position, and it should work just the same. So to get this whole animation working is just this small little bit of code. Again, let me know if you want me to go through the Bezier curves, I'm not sure how familiar people are with that. And Eddie, hopefully that's been useful. Um, thanks a million. Thanks very much for all the comments. It's been really nice, really interesting. I wouldn't have been able to provide this video without them. So keep them coming. Do subscribe and like. It helps out a lot. And thank you very much. See you next time.